Okay, I am Jeff Fulkerson, and today I'm going to show you my new anaclastic forming disc set to help you make spinner bangles. Eurotool is manufacturing this for me, and it's a fabulous piece. What we've got, you have two discs, you have a, a peg, and you have a bolt, and it also comes with a wrench. What the parts are, we start off, we can use this either manually uh, in a vise or with a hydraulic press. I'm going to show you first with the uh, uh, vise. So I'm going to take this other set that I've already used, put the bolt in, and we can put this bolt in either a bench vise. And if you don't have a bench vise, this is a little drill press vise that you can get. They're inexpensive. I don't know how much they are, but they work great. So we'll take this and bolt it in here, and then we uh, place our bangle in there, and put this on, and take the nut and tighten it up, and that's how we form it. So I want to talk about how you go about making this. Essentially, there are two components. One component is the bangle itself. The other component are the spinners, or the little bangles that go on, uh, around it, and then we'll actually spin when we have our piece finished. A couple of things that are really important. First off, this seems to work best with a, a, a bangle that's about 5 eighths of an inch wide. You can experiment, go a little wider, a little uh, thinner, uh, but 5 eighths works really well. You can texture, do whatever you want to the outside and the inside, whatever you want, uh, but the main thing is you have to have a great solder joint. You have to have a great solder joint. As you look at this, the joint's right here. See the sides? The sides are exactly perfectly even. We want a great joint because when we start to squish this, it puts a lot of pressure and the weak spot will give. So if you have a bad solder joint, it'll crack and it'll split and then you're done. So the most important thing is you've got to have a good solder joint. Once you uh, do your bangles and your spinners, what you want is to do all of your finishing before you put them into the discs. So whatever, however you're going to finish it, if you're going to uh, liver sulfur, brass brush, put a high polish on, whatever it is, do that first. And then, I like, I like to form my bangles on the uh, uh, tapered ring mandrel, or excuse me, bracelet mandrel. And it's very important when you do this, especially with the wide one, that you don't smash it down so that it's... Uh, slanted. We want this to be perfectly round, okay? And you can also you can also use a stepped round mandrel, okay? But I find it easier to use the tapered one. And so after you've done all your finishing and it's all ready to go, double check these one more time, make sure everything's flat, and especially with the spinners, when you you get them you get them nice and round, but they can be wavy, right? So you want to put those on your bench block and flatten those out so that that's all ready to go and it's not it's not going to leave any wiggle to it because if you have if you have your spinners all wonky like that, obviously they won't spin. Now, another interesting problem <laughs> is what size spinners do you make? Now, I go by the length or the circumference of the bangle. This is about an eight and a quarter, and I add about half an inch. The, you have the same problem with the spinners as you do with the ring shank. Whatever the thickness of your spinner is, that's going to dictate you need to add a little more. So if you have a real thick, uh, say, piece of square wire, I don't know where I've got some. I had some laying around. Here we go. So this is a uh, uh, 14 gauge square wire. Well, that's thicker, obviously, than this little piece of twisted wire. So this has to be a little bit longer to, to give you the same uh, thickness. So those are just things that you're going to have to play with and experiment and see how it goes, okay? Once you've figured out your uh, discs, 
your, I'm sorry, once you figured out your, your bangle and the size and got a good solder joint and have it all finished and you have your bangles and you figured out those sizes and you have them soldered, these solder joints obviously there's no stress on them. You just want a nice clean joint so it'll look nice. Finish everything before the discs, okay? So here's how this works. It's really simple. You're going to love this. We take our bangle, put it on, we take our two spinners, put those on, and then we put the top disc back on. Now this is kind of self-centering down here. What's very, very important is that your spinner, excuse me, your bangle has to be annealed because this is going to put a lot of pressure on this and you want it annealed all the way around very evenly. So make sure that's done. So we'll take this now. I want to talk about the bolt for a minute. These are just construction bolts. Construction bolts are meant to be put on something, cranked down really hard, and that's it. They're never touched again. But we're going to be opening and closing and opening and closing and opening and closing every time we do a bangle. So basically what happens is these are going to wear out. That's the bad news. The good news is you can run to your local hardware store and buy another bolt for next to nothing. Okay? So what we're going to do is hold. Can you see... Can you see the bangles, the spinners here? We're going to hold those in the center. And can you zoom in on this right in here? And we're just going to tighten this up. And as we tighten it up, you want to watch it. And it just starts to bring that down. And you don't have to crush this thing. We just want to get it, get that shape. Then we'll undo it. Pull this out, and there's our bangle. And you can go bigger or smaller. Uh, it just depends upon what you're, you're working on there. Now, I want to talk about a couple of issues. Well, first off, if you want to use this in a hydraulic press, the bottom disc has... Can you see this little insert? And then see how the, this is fits right in there and it's flush, because you can't have a big bolt sticking out in your hydraulic press so that then as you put this in the press you can put it on it. Now you have to be careful in the hydraulic press because you can exert an incredible amount of force very quickly and you can destroy the whole thing if you're too heavy-handed. So you just have to be uh, you just have to pay attention and watch what you're doing. Now a couple of things that you're going to find may happen to you. First off Sometimes you get a bad solder joint. And as you're crushing this in the disc, your joint splits. See that? I did that on purpose, just for you. Uh-huh. And really, if that happens, you're back to the drawing board. When that happens, what I do is I cut it apart and I save my spinners. And this, uh, the bangle part is shot because <laughs> you'll never get that soldered right back together. Um, but that's one thing that can happen if you do not have a good joint there. That's why that joint is so critical. Another thing that sometimes happens is, I thought I had one here. It's a little uneven. It'll come out a little uneven. And, and this one, I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here, it's kind of uneven. You can take that on your bench block and just kind of tap that around and smooth it up a little bit, and it makes it a lot nicer and, and evens it up. So even if it doesn't come out exactly perfect, you, you can uh, save it and fix it and make it work.